So we're halfway through November. This is Johnny Ward with Flynn Goward, and it's time for some trader chat. We're going to go through the weekend racing primarily and also the Masters. It was a hell of a weekend on the Cheltenham and Punchestown front. Um, the Masters may be a little bit of a damn squib in the end, but Flynn has joined us. Flynn, roughly, um, how did the weekend go overall for the firm? Well, starting with the golf, obviously the Masters was the highlight, Johnny. Uh, DJ ended up winning. He won at 20 under par, five clear of any pursuers. Um, I thought it was quite a quite a boring end to what was a great tournament. Obviously, the course playing a lot easier, um, high, high, um, highlighted by the scores. Uh, the first player to ever shoot um, under 70 in every single round, and Cameron Smith back in second. So, I can certainly tell you that it was a, a very easy course the way it was playing this November. Um, DJ obviously ended up winning, like I just said. It was a bad result for us. It was fine before the tournament. Uh, but in play, we, uh, we laid him 11 to 2 all the way down towards on. So he was a terrible result for us um, in running. Um, the front five, uh, five in the market all, all finished in the places. So I think that tells you what you need to know when, when you're playing on these majors these days. You need to be playing front of the market as, uh, as boring as it is. Um, but all five of the front of the market all placed. And what was the uh, turnover like compared to your average Masters? Obviously, I, I don't know, from anecdotally, from my perspective, there seemed to be an awful lot of betting interest among my mates in it anyway, and most of them seemed to do their dough as well. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if, if you could get them to start betting with us, that'd be fantastic. Job. We didn't see much of that this week. I think some of them do, to be fair. <laughs> um, so, it, it, I mean, in, in terms of bet numbers, we saw a lot of bets, a lot of uptake. Um, I think also in the climate we're in at the moment, I mean, any type of major sporting event that's on this huge interest, especially for me and my mates in terms of watching it, is oh, yeah. keeping us going through this time. Um, but yeah, huge, huge uptake in terms of the number of bets. So, and we, we also had a lot of kind of funky different markets going on with the birdie or better market, which proved to be really popular. Uh, we actually did, uh, did a lot of our money on, on some of their markets. We took on hole 15 in the first round and that uh, looked, looked like the wrong thing to do with Bryson Birdie in it uh, and, and also John Rahm and the other better players um, going well on that hole. So um, it was a good tournament all in all, um, but tough for us in running with DJ going ahead and, and uh, doing the business. Yeah, it was uh, from an Irish perspective with Gaelic Games this weekend. It was an absolutely insanely busy weekend and it was very, very hard to keep on top of everything, especially if you were punting. But Shelton was obviously on um, very much in the background. And the two big results, first of all, Cool Cody, who was really, really game in the big race Saturday. And obviously the shunter landed a bit of a punch yesterday in the Great Wood, owned by a buddy of mine, Paul Byrne. Um, a horse that was actually a very shrewd purchase, to be fair. Looked like I backed him actually each way. I thought I'd done my dough completely three out and he ends up winning well. Not a good result for the firm would have thought no it wasn't it was 10 to 1 in the morning we we, we laid all the 10s all the way down to 30 to 2 so we didn't miss the move we went and surely got stung by it um i would imagine probably laid out for the race um the way he kind of came there traveling and then went away at the end was really impressive in the ground and obviously had a lot in hand it was interesting to be off a mark of 118 i thought normally when they come over here uh, they get actually hikes up by 10 pounds but this one managed to kind of get away with it so obviously all in hindsight but we did our money in that race on the shunter and Cool Cody, like you just mentioned, was a great result for us in the, in the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Uh, simply the best was the big bogey for us there. So it was great to see Cool Cody hang on. Uh, great, great ride from the jockey there as well. Um, moving on to the cross country, it was sad to see uh, what, what happened to Tiger Roll in terms of the way that he ran. He just looked really flat. We don't really know what's going to happen with him now, do we? Uh, but Kingswell Theatre winning that was a good result. Um, moving on to the novices, which I think is, is the most interesting part about this meeting at Cheltenham. We see these novices coming out. Uh, the, the two mile, the uh, two and a half and the three mile chase um, to see where they're going to go at Cheltenham, who's coming out on uh, flames to start with. Uh, Protector I thought was impressive in the two mile for novice. Um, I wouldn't really have him, uh, him have much of a chance when it comes to Cheltenham for the marsh, but he's 20 to one for that with 20 to one for the marsh with Protector at the uh, Dan Skelton charge. Uh, El Dorado Allen won the two mile novice. I uh, thought he was pretty fortunate with Gumball falling at the last. Mm. Um, I thought it was a pretty tame performance, to be honest. And obviously the favourite underperforming there. He's 20 to 1 for the Arkle. I think he'll need soft ground and I think he'll stay further. So I'm not even sure if he'll go for that. Um, Tizard said it's one of his best two-mile chasers. But if you look through the history of Tizard's two-mile chasers, there aren't many to pick from. Um, so even if he is the best, he might not be great. Um, then moving on to the Mayor's Bumper. Obviously, saw, uh, uh, we saw a bit of a funny result there with the Mayor's Bumper. Uh, Ishkara lady actually winning the race, but it being declared a dead heat. I'm not sure what, what you think of that, Johnny. But Yeah, it, there was a lot of chat great. about that, to be fair. Yeah, well, it wasn't great by all counts. Not no. advertising for the sport, really, is it? But um, in this day and age, you can't really be having light as an issue for photo finishes, I don't think. Uh, but, it, <laughs> uh, but they're both 25 to 1 for the champion bumper. I did think that they're both smart horses. They both pulled clear. 
and the Rachel at Mars better in the field. I'm not sure what, what happened with the Anthony Honeyball favourite. Um, bat, bat off the boards before the off, and that was the loser in the race for us. But um, got nowhere near and kind of blew up completely. And these two just came through and took it up. I thought they looked quite smart. Um, but I thought performance of the weekend went to the big breakaway in, in the three mile novice chase. He was awesome. He was, you know, that 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 moment where he came off the bridle and he was. It just looked like he'd absolutely. He was kind of in a slumber for much of the race. Then he completely fell asleep, and then he's. You could see his head lugged to the right for much of the kind of the straight. He was just completely dossing, and the way he jumped. Oh my god. Yeah, he was class. I, I mean, the, the the one thing that you can maybe pick about his performance was he was jumping a bit big, but I think if, if they're going a quicker pace, then he jumps quicker. Oh, um, yeah. And when Puffy really asked for one, he really found lengths. I think it was at the third last, he found a few lengths. Um, he 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 would be my play going forward for Cheltenham. I mean, he's 10 to 1 for the RSA out there. We're eights, uh, so ducking him ever so slightly. Uh, but I thought that, that that was performance of the weekend. And these Tizard horses just tend to get better and better with runs, don't they? So he, he would be one that I would take forward for the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, anyone who's a fan of Fontaine's DC uh, will know the song about uh, the kid who wants to be big and he's going to be big. But it's the big getaway and the big breakaway for me that are two of the horses look out for this season. I think the big getaway is going to be an absolute star. But one thing I love about racing, Flynn, is after two miles in a race with, what, five runners, the Morgiana, you're split by a neck and a short head. And... This was a strange race because Abacadabra has obviously won, beat San Ra. There was nothing between them, essentially, at the line. It was a very kind of false race in many respects. Um, and you could argue that neither did his chance of, be, of winning at Cheltenham any favours, but you could also argue, and I'd be kind of tending to this way, that I think both of them actually ran good Cheltenham trial because it was a mess for a race. They'd be much better suited at Cheltenham. What were the repercussions for the markets? Do you know, they're all pretty untrained. Uh, so Abracadabra mm. has obviously won the race, um, even though a lot of people think that San Ra should obviously got a clear run. Uh, Abracadabra is 8-1 to for the champion hurdle and Sam Wright is 7-1. to one. Um, So not a huge amount of change in that market. Um, you say you were pretty impressed with him, but I wasn't really. I just, I, I, I think that Abracadabra is a weak finisher, um, but I think he wasn't doing an awful lot in front yesterday. I'll be more no. impressed with him than Sam Ra, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say I was impressed in that Sam Ra was basically too keen. He was too raw. Mm-hmm. If you're beating Jason the Militant a neck or a neck and a short head, that's nowhere near good enough probably to win a champion hurdle. But it was just that um, you're looking at the way they travel in their races, and I still think Abacadabra is just going to be far better. And at least he won. At least he put his head in front. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do agree with that. I do think he's a bit of a weak finisher, but I think mm-hmm. he idles as well. And I think that... I think that he can be labelled as a massive weak finisher, but in fact, he is just idling in front. I think mm. he got beat by a very good horse in the Supreme last year. In Absolutely. Um, Ab- so I, I wouldn't be put off him massively for, for Cheltenham, but I would be put off Samwa. I mean, I, I just wasn't a massive fan of the way he travelled. Um, even, even the way he jumped, to be honest, when he came up first time up, he jumped okay. Um, upped in class this time and didn't jump great. Um, mm. I, I'd be more about Abracadabras, but to be honest, I don't think anything will get near Everton when we get to March anyway. Oh, couldn't agree with you at all there but uh, that's the beauty of this we'll be arguing and both of us or one of us will be wrong now for the next six okay. months um, but keep an eye out for Elixir Danny as well who actually ran in the Supreme same connections as uh, the favourite yesterday but hasn't been seen since Betfair Chase and football this week there isn't an awful lot going on after the mad weekend that we've had but what are we looking at? Uh, so Betfair Chase obviously we're going to get Dex to start to filter through today um, loss in translation is the favourite there obviously if declared which I'd imagine he will be it's been the target for him uh, we do have Santini going for the race and, and Bristol to my is obviously turning up. I'd imagine he's probably mm. passed it a little bit, Bristol to my. Um, we have laid lost in translation and suppose that he would be a loser there. And we've also laid St. St. Calvados, which isn't terrible for us because he doesn't go for the race. Um, he, he's injured actually, so he'll be out for a while, uh, which means obviously St. Calvados um, is not going to be a bad result for us come the weekend. Um, I would imagine that lost in translation will be the one going our favourite. Um, obviously ran really well in the race last year, uh, beating Bristol to my. Um, Santini would probably need the run I would imagine uh, but a good, a good race to look forward to at Haydock this weekend in the Betfair chase Yeah and a scatter of international games as well England playing Iceland Ireland who now have scored one goal in seven games uh, taking on Bulgaria and really really need a win or even a goal at this stage but uh, obviously a lot of international games coming up Yeah yeah so, so we've got the international team midweek and then we've got the Premier League back at the weekend so thank God having the Premier League back I don't know how you feel about the international mm. stuff Johnny but I much prefer having a plethora of uh, Premier League games and we, we tend to see a lot more business on the Premier League games than we do on the midweek and weekend international stuff so I'll well it's probably... fascinating the Premier League now because just like all the injuries Liverpool have had and everything that has befallen them yet at the same time I'd still probably make them favourites even though they're not to win the league yeah so as, as soon as the yeah, Gomez injury um, kind of filtered through the, the uh, news channels and Twitter uh, City became favourites against the City at 7-5 Liverpool 13-8 Chelsea 7s uh, Tottenham 8, so then uh, 28 to 1 bar, that's Leicester. 
Um, so uh, Man City have, have really shown that at the head of the market. But to be honest, I wouldn't be convinced by any of them and I still think Liverpool mm. with a bet. Yeah, we tend to agree with that. Uh, thanks a million for that, Flynn. Thank you, Johnny. Cheers. Yeah, that was trader chat for into the middle of November. I think once we get through November, it'll nearly be Christmas and things will be a lot brighter again. Thanks for watching. Fingers crossed.